G'day, I'm Charlie Pickering. Welcome to the weekly in a week so frustrating even the ABC's own Casey, the COVID curve, Briggs lost his cool. ABC analyst Casey Briggs joins us now. Uh, Casey, yeah, so while we're waiting for the Victoria... Actually, Daniel Andrews is stepping up just now. Let's take a listen to what he's got to say. Here's the week. It was a big one with mask edicts, presidential fact-checking and controversy on The Voice. And the whole week dominated by the spectre of stage four lockdowns hanging over the heads of Melburnians, which could include labelling bottle shops as non-essential. Non-essential stores could shut. Of all the pandemic misinformation we've heard, that really takes the cake, if we're still allowed to take cake. Well, in the ACT, if anything, things were too open. Officers conducting COVID-19 compliance checks say people in isolation have been answering the door in the nude. That is brave. If you've ever been nude in a Canberra winter, you'll know that Cockington Green is a miniature village. But here at The Weekly, our week started on Thursday with the Zodiac. It can inspire you to go for that new job, fall in love or commit a series of unsolved murders in the late 60s. For a load of nonsense, it's powerful stuff. But the Zodiac could be getting a makeover. This is the story of the day, people. Mm -hmm. NASA has revealed there is a 13th sign of what? the Zodiac. A NASA blog from four years ago gaining traction online, pointing to the fact that there's a 13th constellation that's not used in the Zodiac. The discovery means all our star signs could change. It is exciting, Hitch. Practically speaking, that means that they're squeezing 13 signs into 12 months and all the current dates have to shift. Uh, for example, uh, I will be going from a Virgo to a Leo. Uh, astrologically, that means that this week I should have been opening myself to a new opportunity at work, but instead I was hoping to spark a new relationship with a mysterious stranger. Boy, I really regret answering the door nude to those COVID testers now. So, what's the 13th star sign? Meet Ophiuchus, represented by a snake-bearing man. Ophiuchus, the snake-bearer. <laughs> Ophiuchus, Carl. Ophiuchus, the constellation representing the time Apollo used a snake to dry his bits while a cow watched. Ophiuchus set up a showdown between two bitter rivals, astronomers and astrologers. First up, what do the astronomers, which are the real ones, think of the new development? This isn't a new thing, but it appears that astrologers don't like to admit the existence of it. OK, astrologers, who are the weird auntie ones, what have you got? Astrologers say the signs are based around the sun and therefore there is no 13th sign. We find it very irritating that this keeps propping up because it's a, a real furphy. So someone's just made up a complete furphy. That does sound irritating. Astrologer. Perhaps the most enlightening part of the story was that, in a world of Australian media, astronomers and astrologers are considered equal. To understand just what is going on, we are bringing in psychic, spiritual advisor and intuitive astrologer Rose Smith and astrophysicist Dr Brad Tucker, just to balance things mm. out. Perfectly balanced. Australian media is such a Libra. Royal watchers and normal people got a surprise with Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson's daughter Beatrice marrying property tycoon Eduardo Mapelli Mozzi. Buckingham Palace has confirmed that Princess Beatrice has tied the knot in a small and private ceremony watched on by her grandmother, Queen Elizabeth. Marrying in secret at the All Saints Chapel in Windsor. Photos released by the palace this morning of her with Her Majesty and Prince Philip. Her dad, Prince Andrew, is nowhere in sight. So there are more photos of Andrew with Jeffrey Epstein than with his own daughter at her wedding. But they still kept it traditional. There was something old, something new, something borrowed and something that the FBI would love to bring in for questioning. As the weekend rolled on, we saw Victoria's constantly yo-yoing COVID numbers. 317... 217... 484 new cases. Meaning it was crucial that we stayed vigilant, obeyed the lockdown and only left the house for essential reasons. So did Melbourne get the message? A Victorian man's been fined for driving more than 30 kilometres to buy a specific type of butter chicken. To this place that absolutely must have the best butter chicken, there's no mention that he gets anything else. There's no naan bread, no mango chutney. I mean, who loves Indian food that much. I love Indian food. It's my favourite food. I promise you I will do that. <laughs> Old Mate Butter Chicken wasn't the only one out and about on the weekend. 
Friends of 15 years Dale and Jodie don't live in the postcode and don't know whether they can come back. After a change in lockdown rules to explicitly restrict Melburnians to their own neighbourhoods for exercise and shopping. Well, you get sick of walking the same streets. I, you know, I've done, I've done all of Brighton. Jody became an internet sensation and reportedly claimed she was providing people with light entertainment to get them through the Dandemic. But Dandemic himself wasn't impressed. Whether you're in Broadmeadows or Brighton, uh, stay at home means stay at home. And if walking your local streets is boring, well, being bored is much better than being in intensive care. I don't know, I watch a lot of TV and intensive care always has high drama, hunky doctors and it's the only place you can still gather with a lot of other Victorians. As Australians continue to work through the pandemic to keep the economy and society running, our politicians, yeah, not so much. The Prime Minister has taken the extraordinary step of cancelling the next sitting of Parliament. Wow. Cancel culture has gone too far. Scott Morrison heeding the advice of the acting chief medical officer, moving to cancel the first sitting week of August due to the recent outbreaks in Victoria and New South Wales. There's growing fears Victorian MPs and their staff could bring the virus to Canberra. And I've always suspected that some of the politicians are basically super spreaders. They're out there in the community, they're coming into Canberra. They've got to keep, keep that risk in mind. Yeah, and from what I've heard, Canberra COVID testers have enough dicks to deal with already. Not gathering in Parliament right now may make sense, but many of us, including the National Cabinet, have been working remotely for months. We've all managed to, you know, work from home, learn from home, you know, use technology to handle this. Why can't they do that uh, in Parliament? And as if to make the point, everyone David was talking to had managed to find a way to do their job virtually as well, which also means this full French press of coffee is just for David. No wonder he's so energetic at 9am on a Sunday. Call me a cold-hearted conservative, but if you're living in government housing while taxpayers pay your salary, either do your job over Zoom like everyone else, or don't and see how you go living off job seeker like everyone else. Keen to do anything to distract from the pandemic he's not fighting, President Trump sat down for a wide-ranging interview with Fox News' Chris Wallace. I'll be right eventually. <laughs> it was like insiders, but instead of being inside on a couch, it was outside on mum's good chairs. You might think Fox News would be a softball interview, but Wallace called Trump out on his lies, starting with America's coronavirus mortality rate. We have the seventh highest mortality rate in the world. I think it's the opposite. I think we have one of the lowest mortality it's rates true, in the sir. world. Yeah, just because it isn't true doesn't mean it's not a fact. In fact, Trump was so confident he decided to fact check himself. Ready? I, you you can check you it out. Could you please get me the mortality rate? Yeah. Kaylee's right here. Number Hi. number one low mortality rate. The White House went with this chart from the European CDC. Other countries doing better, like Russia, aren't included in the White House chart. So America has the best mortality rate if you take out all the countries that have better mortality rates. I mean, he's not wrong. But Trump wasn't done with his live fact checks. It's really because they wanted to fund the police, and Biden wants to fund, to fund no, he, the police. Sir, he does not. Look, he signed a charter with Bernie Sanders. I will get that one, just like I was right on the mortality rate. It says abolish, it says a fund. Let's go. All right, get well, me, you, get you, me the charter, please. Kaylee? Where's Kaylee? Kaylee! He says defund the police. Okay, what this says see. here prosecution, sanctuary cities, incentivize illegal alien, expand. Asylum, abolish immigration detention. No, I, that's not well, abolish. No, I, I, well, fine. Okay. This thing is many pages long. Look, it's defund the police. It's Marbo. It's 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 just the vibe. Okay. Trump was starting to sweat now, and I mean literally sweating. So we brought out the big guns and revealed the real problem with the Biden presidency. If Joe Biden got in, religion will be gone. Okay. Life, you could forget about that, the whole question of life. Yeah, no more life, people. Pack your things, existence is over, Joe Biden hates life. Fact check that. Kaylee! Reality contest The Voice came to a close this week and it was a season dogged by controversy. There were cheating scandals, like when Guy turned his chair at a time when you weren't supposed to turn your chair, which is a cardinal sin in the rotating chair-based singing competition world. I'm not cheating, I just... You are cheating. Yeah, sit on this and rotate, you monster. And there were accusations of nepotism. Oh, is it your brother? That's my brother. <laughs> your brother, really? Yeah. You're his brother? No, you're lying. No, he's, he's my brother. Yeah, we get it. That's your brother. And he's your boy, George.
It was a bad look that Guy Sebastian's brother, Chris Sebastian, was in a competition that Guy himself was a judge on. But as far as reality TV contests go, it was still pretty fair. I mean, as long as he didn't win the thing. The winner of The Voice 2020 is... Chris Sebastian! Chris was so happy, he shat a firework. And despite the scandal brewing on social media, Chris Sebastian still got to live out every Australian's dream. You got to perform last night with Daryl Bray. I mean... Let's have her, let's have her let's, a minute, quick. Look. Let's talk about that for a second. You would have made your brother jealous. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All of my brothers, four boys, and Jeremy, my youngest brother, is obsessed with Daryl. Wait, there's a Jeremy Sebastian now? Well, that's next year's season wrapped up. Big government announcement on Tuesday with JobKeeper and increased JobSeeker payments extended. And the news all agreed that that meant one thing. Australians relying on JobKeeper and JobSeeker payments to ride out the coronavirus pandemic can breathe a sigh of relief this morning. Can breathe a sigh of relief this morning. Can breathe a sigh of relief this morning. Yes, we can breathe a sigh of relief, but remember, COVID can spread through droplets of relief. So please breathe your sighs through a face mask or into your elbow. Which brings us to tonight, where in a few hours the wearing of masks in Melbourne will be upgraded from recommended for ninjas and uggos to mandatory. For the first time since the pandemic hit our shores, masks will be mandatory. First and foremost, masks and face coverings will, from 11.59pm Wednesday night, be mandatory. Uh, for uh, everyone in Melbourne and Mitchell Shire. They don't have to be professional, homemade works well, and if nothing else, you can put a scarf over your face. A timeless look that says, I'm here to rob your stagecoach. So is wearing a mask a good idea? Some medical experts thought so, but the support wasn't universal, as we heard from the medical experts on the Sunday footy show. But once again, Daniel Andrews makes it difficult for everyone in the sense that, you know, there, there's so many grey areas here. You know, like you asked from the outset about running. Well, he, did, he did it say, he did that. say. Do you have to have a mask on when you're in the car? I wouldn't have thought yeah. so. Mm. I wouldn't have thought so. But common sense, yeah. Tony. He doesn't have to explain everything. Well, he does, actually. He does, Bill. It's common sense, mate. He does, Bill. Not hard. Yeah, I should say in the interest of balance that my epidemiologist thinks that Gold Coast are the real deal this year. And that's the week.